When God says, let us make humanity in our image and in our likeness in Genesis 1.26, who's us? Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. And there are a lot of people who try to make this a lot more complicated than it actually is. Uh, some people want to understand Elohim as a plural noun here. Now, the word Elohim is grammatically plural, and it can refer to a single deity, or it can refer to multiple deities. And to determine which it is, you just look at the verbs and the pronouns. If they're plural, then it means deities. If they're singular, then it means deity, or a reference to the God of Israel. And in Genesis 126, it's very clearly singular, Vayomer Elohim, and God said. But then what God says has a plural sense. Uh, it is a cohortative or a first-person plural command. Let us make humanity. This is God speaking to the gods of the divine council. This is not a reference to the Trinity. Uh, that concept would not exist until it was created between the 2nd and the 5th centuries CE, many centuries after this text was originally composed. This is not a reference to the Anunnaki or to anything other than just the divine council, the deliberative body that has oversight over the creation and the functioning of the universe. And here God is telling them, let us create humanity. And this agrees with the other creation accounts from this time and place that has the creation of humanity as one of the acts of the deliberative body of the gods of the universe. Now, the primeval history, Genesis 1 through 11, has several references to these deities. So, in Genesis 3, the serpent tells Eve that if you eat the fruit, you will become like the gods, knowing good and evil. And then in verse 22, God recognizes the human has become like one of us. Again, like one of the gods. And then they cut off their access to the tree of life so that they don't become even more like the gods by achieving the other prototypical feature of deity immortality. In Genesis 6 we have a reference to the gods, the Bnei Elohim, the children of God who come down and have demigod offspring with human women. The story seems to be placed where it is to give God a reason to want to destroy the earth. And then again in Genesis chapter 11 we have another cohortative where God says to the gods of the divine council, let us go down and they are building a tower that will reach the heavens so that they can make a name for themselves. And the idea here is that if they do this nothing will be beyond their grasp or their ability to accomplish, which in another sense makes them more divine than human. And so in all of these narratives humanity is encroaching upon the boundaries of deity and God and the gods are there to slap them back down. So God is represented as kind of an antagonist in the main narratives of the primeval history, trying to prevent humanity from overcoming the weaknesses and the limits of being human. And so in that sense, it is an etiology for why humans are limited the way they are. God is the main antagonist, but in the background sit the gods of the divine council.